Hey you guys, welcome back. Um, just want to take a few minutes here and just kind of discuss with you guys um, some unfortunate events that took place um, a few months back. And when I've been on live streams, I've noticed in the chats some questions that have come up when it comes specifically with shrimp. Um, seen a lot more uh, individuals being interested in shrimp. Um, I've bred uh, specifically Neocaridana shrimp for almost a decade and um, in our market specifically it did crash um, probably about seven eight years ago when I say crash uh, the market just pretty much dwindled down when it came to your dwarf shrimp species uh, freshwater species and um, therefore I actually I got out of breeding those specific um, strains and then within the last uh, couple years I got back into uh, breeding of the Neocaridina shrimp once again um, as I noticed that uh, they're more in demand and you see a lot uh, more variations now when it comes to color um, certain genetic breeding certain selective breeding and so on and so forth so, um, and my wife and I we went to the aquatic experience last November and uh, unfortunately when we got back um, um, after about a week or two, I uh, started noticing a lot of die-offs in one of my um, large uh, um, breeder uh, setups that I have. And um, fortunately, uh, the moral of the story is I lost over 2,000 Neocaridina shrimp. And um, that's why I say quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. I'm just going to say it's inexcusable. Um, been in this hobby f for many, many years. and. Why I say it's inexcusable is you need a quarantine, especially when you're talking shrimp and you don't know the source. And even when you know the source, because they're very susceptible to disease, and once disease happens in shrimp, it can be catastrophic. And unfortunately, in my case, it was very much so catastrophic. You're talking at least 2,000 Neocaridina, a lot of which were buried uh, shrimp. And unfortunately, um, what specifically happened within my particular uh, setup, the Elobiopsidae. So I will put a link um, to that specific disease and it's not too well known um, to a lot of hobbyists. Elobiopsidae is, is a, once it happens, um, put it in layman's terms, it really is not reversible unfortunately. Uh, the best thing that you can do is just simply um, uh, shut down your system um, and basically you got to start over. So I did what I could um, in order to try to save uh, the shrimp that I had and unfortunately I lost every one of them. So um, quarantine, quarantine, uh, especially with shrimp and with your fish. Um, even if you can rely on a source, you still need a quarantine. So I know 100% certainty it was Elobiopsidae. Um, I specifically took uh, the deceased shrimp and brought them to our uh, veterinarian where I utilize his high power microscope and um, was able to actually utilize that opportunity to kind of share with some of his techs and uh, the staff um, you know uh, certain diseases within shrimp so I guess I in my unfortunate event I was able to use it as a training tool to try to help other people and through the microscope and so forth we we're able to compare uh, the imaging from Elobiopsidae um, and uh, confirm that that's exactly what had taken place so it was the first time that that particular disease happened in, in my uh, experience as a hobbyist um, as well as a breeder in that sense and unfortunately the, then there's also black spot disease. I'm not going to go into the specifics about each disease. All I can do is encourage you guys to get familiar um, with um, what that is. So if you plan on keeping uh, you know shrimp in, uh, specifically. Um, so with that said make sure you guys quarantine. My rule of thumb with shrimp now is three months of quarantine so if I do bring in any other shrimp I will for sure quarantine them for uh, no less than three months um, <clears throat> I had never had any issues um, 
with shrimp prior to that. Now with fish, it's a different story because um, you're dealing with different uh, different aspects and so forth. But um, when it comes to with your dwarf, uh, Neocaridina, Caridina species, and so on and so forth, um, you have to be very careful because um, they they are hardy. Uh, but once a disease happens in shrimp, their immune system just can't take it. Uh, so. I'm not going to go, like I said, into the specifics of a breakdown because it would just be simply redundant and unnecessary. So I'm going to um, put a link to each one of the diseases, Elobiopsidae, as well as black spot disease. Get yourself familiar with it. It's always good to be prepared. Um, and unfortunately, I went ahead and tore down that entire system um, and had to completely start over again. So that's why I ordered some shrimp. And I ordered shrimp uh, from Lucas Bretts at um, LRB Aquatics, and uh, basically had to get the you know my systems going once again. I uh, thankfully, with one of my strains of the Neocaridina cherry shrimp, um, during that specific time when I lost all those others, I had another system going, actually two other systems going, um, and that's what I recommend. So thank goodness I still had other systems up and running uh, with that specific strain and um, separate breeders uh, setups for that matter um, was uh, you know um, able to at least keep um, keep my strains and stuff going and uh, unfortunately the one that I lost them were from uh, the you know my large uh, 90 gallon setup so um, now what I did is, as I've been showing you guys, um, I would definitely suggest that you do either 10 or 20 gallon setups and do individual strain per tank and then have at least one or two other additional grow out or backing rearing tanks um, already cycled and ready to go so you can either selectively um, obtain uh, your best um, your best breeds and then introduce them into your rearing or backup tanks and then just utilize them simply as they grow out then that way if anything unfortunately ever did happen um, to one of your setups then you don't have to be concerned you can just simply shut that system down and I'm saying worst case scenario you shut it down but at least you still have other um, other setups going and that isn't just for shrimp um, that's kind of just pretty much common sense and, and good judgment for that matter um, um, and you don't have to go out and spend a ton of money you know your Pesquise Plus, PetSmart, Peco um, <clears throat> a lot of those guys price match one another but if one of them are doing the dollar per gallon sale you can get you know yourself a nice Aquion um, 10 gallons out of for 10 bucks your 20 longs work great I love those um, uh, your 40 breeders, your 30s, so on and so forth, and uh, so you don't have to spend a ton of money. And 10 gallons is plenty sufficient enough, as you guys can see. Um, this is a strain of cherry shrimp and tons of fry. Um, you're not even going to be able to see them because it's too difficult uh, with a camera I'm using. This is the um, snowballs, uh, tons of fry in there. Um, there's more fry in here. This is another strain of cherry shrimp, and then fry up here as well and then this is a 20 this is a 20 long that I'm using, utilizing for the uh, yellow uh, neocaridina um, so I got two here of two different strains of cherry shrimp and then I have um, one strain right now going um, actually I got another strain going here of cherry shrimp which I almost forgot about and this is what I'm talking about this has some of my um, dominant male and female uh, breeders in here um, so again I have backups in there I also have one over here with my ancestors Placos um, I got more males and females as well as fry in this tank and I utilize this one here um, as a uh, community establishment that I utilize for ancestors I got crayfish in there as well as um, uh, some grow outs of shrimp uh, currently I have snowball shrimp in there. I got another setup going here that I'm cycling. Uh, this is just a 10 gallon um, and I'll be using that as a grow out uh, as well and then of course turtles in that tank I won't put nothing in there with them. Um, 
there's some crayfish in there with them, but I'm not going to put any shrimp. Um, I got crayfish in here currently on Sister Spicos, and I could also add cherry shrimp if I wanted to. Um, I got crayfish in here as well, and then over here I wouldn't put anything else in there because I have my um, Tetras as well as um, some of my ancestors Plecos, uh, male and female dominant. And then, as you guys know in previous videos, obviously I have, these are all what I meant, um, my dominant male and female breeders um, and sisters. So, um, down here is a turtle tank that's got Dum Dum in it, as you can see. Actually, I walked into a watery mess today because, um, fortunately, my, uh, my overflow it wasn't working properly so anyways it's taken care of now but yeah I had a big puddle down there on the floor so <clears throat> it didn't take long to clean up that's what's nice is I utilize my um, laundry slash maintenance room um, and uh, as you can see I got a drain right down there on the floor I run a carbon filter on all my drip systems and then um, just a uh, DIY overflow as well you know you can see there's a drip line so these guys here are not on a continuous drip system um, I do water changes three times a week on these guys um, and then up there same uh, no no drip system I do have a drip system on the grow outs for the ancestress because um, they didn't need lots of water changes and they'll grow um, a lot faster so provide good um, establishment of water um, and uh, water quality and uh, as long as you main, maintain consistency with them uh, you'll see uh, quite a good success with uh, um, as well as a good established diet and, and they will grow uh, quite a bit faster um, nothing on this entire rack system as far as continuous um, automated as far as dripping goes um, I do water changes on those pretty much just as a top off so as needed, um, I try to stay away and let the plants um, do their work. That's why you see um, I let things just go crazy in there as far as with plants and algae and so forth. So, so don't create more work for yourself uh, than needed. So as long as you're maintaining good uh, water quality, um, then go ahead and just do your top offs. And I'm talking because of these being... Um, uh, my shrimp tanks and I don't want a lot of swings either because they're not going to be able to handle it and then what I do is I fill up my five gallon buckets and I got several of them uh, with the gamma seal or the gamma top so I definitely recommend that if you guys do have a fish room um, these cheap lids here they're not going to hold the water in the gamma ones will because uh, they do have the seal around it and they work great and then they also will uh, seal it and it'll last for a long time and then I pre dechlorinate um, so I have three or four of those on hand ready to go as soon as I need to do a water change and that does one of two purposes it temperature is already temperature acclimated so as soon as I introduce the water as a top off into my um, uh, breeder rack here <coughs> then I don't have to worry about um, swings as far as uh, temperature and uh, um, and that they've already been, uh, you know, pre dechlorinated so I don't have to worry about introducing straight out of the tap. Now with these guys, <clears throat> they're completely fine. You can just go ahead and um, do a normal water change. I do have overflow pipes on them because this whole rack system, I used to have uh, four more up top, just like this. Um, is That was on one uh, sump system down here. I custom built this entire rack uh, quite a few years back, and I've a lot of things had a lot of success but when I end up tearing it down was what I told you guys at the beginning of the video um, when I had a catastrophe and unfortunately it wasn't just with my Neocaridina shrimp it was also with my um, ancestors Plecos I lost almost 600 of them and that wasn't through Elobiopsidae that was through a very very bad case of ick and unfortunately it was overlooked and being on one uh, main system um, that's what happens so um, I tried again doing what I could to get them to survive but fortunately uh, it did not work out that way so lost a lot of money a lot of time needless to say that's why you see every one of my systems now um, not connected and I will never go back to a connected system uh, 
from that so it was one of those things leading up to that point it wasn't broke so I never fixed it after the aquatic experience obviously it was a broken system uh, it wasn't working for me anymore and uh, you know I know people have gone on for years run on sump systems with uh, absolutely no issues and that was I was one of those individuals that ran um, you know sometimes 8, 10, 12 tanks on one system and didn't have any issues but uh, now I feel a lot more comfortable a lot more confident and with these guys here I do leave a gap um, in between enough in case any of the shrimp um, because these are currently no lids I am going to be getting lids for these but as far as um, uh, con condensation and so forth um, I don't have to worry about a lot of evaporation um, these mats I have here um, and I can do a separate video on this sometime but this is just a shelving mat you can go to Lowe's, Home Depot, um, Menards and these are just your liners your shelving liners and I use these are thick rubber material and they work great um, if you get water on them aesthetically it just look, makes it look nice shelving unit that I'm using I picked it up at uh, um, one of our big box retailers and it was actually on clearance and I picked that up for about 17 bucks and they're only about 50 60 dollars and it fits perfectly um, 120 long up top and I got the three tens another 20 long and then three tens on the bottom and um, you, you could obviously do three tens, uh, you know, three more tens there, obviously, because they're all the same. And uh, there's actually one more shelf that came with it, so I just eliminated that um, <clears throat> that particular shelf because I didn't need it. Uh, so, and it wouldn't work because you need enough spacing. And, you know, there's a pretty decent size gap. There's about an eight inch gap from here to here, so plenty of room. Uh, to work and then same here plenty of room so I don't want to get them too tight um, I would have literally had to almost stack the shelves directly right on top of the next rack um, of tanks if I wanted to add the other shelf but uh, <clears throat> in all it it worked out quite well um, you know I'm content with it uh, this is maximizing and being most efficient that I can in a small space um, um, then I would say probably a 10 by 10 at the most um, so 10 foot by 10 foot so you're talking 100 square feet and the ceilings are 8 foot because um, I don't have a drop ceiling in here it's just uh, floor joists just open and what I did is I just insulated this a few years back um, just using uh, regular uh, foam insulation that is your one inch um, and uh, then I just used uh, uh, spray foam going around the rim joist and it contains it it maintains the temperature in here in the winter um, as you can see right around 75 72 degrees and then um, that's the humidity level um, which is right around 60 percent so still kind of the top end of ideal but it's still comfortable in here with that said you guys um i didn't plan on this dragging on as long uh as always if you guys like this content you like the channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that notification bell um as well so you guys can get any updates i think i've done about six live streams so far i think i have three up uh on my youtube channel so you guys can go ahead and check those out and um yeah so if you guys have any comments uh, or questions for me go ahead and leave them in the comment section below i'll do my best to get back with you guys and i really appreciate you guys stopping by and as always stay encouraged keep on keeping on happy fishing until next one we'll talk to you